This circuit, as simple as it is, is very important to us because it can be shown that almost any RC circuit in our course can be reduced to this one. This capacitor has been connected to the 7 and equivalent on the left for a very long time. At t equals 0, the switch will move to position y and will connect the capacitor to a different 7 and equivalent, the one on the right. Let's analyze the circuit. We are told that the switch has been in X for a very long time. So, the capacitor has been connected to the 7 and equivalent 10 volts 2 ohms for a very long time. It is in steady state, it is in DC steady state, so the current through it is zero. Because the current is zero, the voltage in the 2 ohm resistor is zero volts, which means if we apply a KVL equation around this loop, that the voltage in the capacitor is the same as the voltage in the Thevenin source. Let's call this Thevenin source v 7 n one and this one v 7 n 2 The voltage in the capacitor is v 7 n one and that's why there is no current in the circuit, 10 volts. Observe, we had no use whatsoever for R7 and of the first 7 and circuit. Now we switch this capacitor over to the 7 and equivalent on the right. The voltage in the capacitor that is initially 10 volts in this case, VTH1, will start to change. And if left connected to Y for a sufficiently long time, it will reach eventually this is steady state. In this is steady state, the current will be zero through the capacitor, the voltage in the 7 ohm resistor will be zero, and the voltage in the capacitor will be just V7 and 2, 3 volts. In short, the final voltage of this capacitor is 3 volts. It's V7 and 2. VZ0, the initial voltage in the capacitor, is V7 and 1. And VCF, the final voltage of the capacitor, is V7 and 2. This is 10 volts in this exercise, and this is 3 volts. The voltage in the capacitor will start at 10 volts and will drift slowly or faster towards this source, 3 volts. How quickly? Depends on the time constant RC. These are. R7 and 2 times C. The time constant is going to be R7 and 2, this one, times C. In this case, time constant is 7 times 2, 14 seconds. The voltage in the capacitor can now be plotted. It starts at 10 volts. This is the voltage of the capacitor as a function of time. And its final value will be 3 volts. will decay according to an exponential like so. This is 0. And the time constant is 14 seconds. We can write Vc as a function of time. The voltage in the capacitor as a function of time. It has a final value of 3. And it has an exponential with this amplitude writing on top. Initial value minus final value exponential minus t over tau. That is the voltage of the capacitor as a function of time, is this curve. Let's say that we are asked to find out the energy in the capacitor five seconds after we move the switch. This is a different exercise. Well, one way to compute that would be at t equal 5 seconds. We can compute the voltage in the capacitor. By all means, just substitute t for 5 seconds and determine what is the value of that voltage. 7.898 volts. But what we want is the energy in the capacitor. But the energy in the capacitor at any point in time is one half the capacitance times the voltage in the capacitor squared. In this case, one half of C, C is 2, cancels out. 
is V in the capacitor squared, 7.898 squared. That is the energy. 62.37 joules. That is the energy of the capacitor at T equals 5 seconds after we move the switch from X to Y. Another way to compute the energy in the capacitor at T equals 5 seconds after we move the switch to Y is, now that we have the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time, to compute the current in the capacitor also as a function of time. In this current in the capacitor as a function of time, which would be the voltage in the capacitor, this one, minus 3 volts divided by 7. So the current in the capacitor as a function of time is the voltage in the capacitor, this one, 3 plus 7 e to the negative t over 14 minus 3 volts of this source divided by 7 ohms of the resistor. Of course, this cancels out. Oops, this is a 7 by 7 ohms of the resistor, and this cancels out that, and the current is E to the negative T over 14. Now, multiplying this and that, we get the power in the capacitor as a function of time. And if we integrate that power from 0 to T equal 5, we get how much energy has been used up by the capacitor in that time. The first thing is to write the voltage, which is 3 plus 7, that multiplies e to the negative t divided 14. There is the voltage and there is the current in the capacitor. Multiply them like so, and that is a power in the capacitor as a function of time. If we integrate that, how? Down arrow, like this. And then, once it's highlighted, we go and integrate that with this integral in red. Integral. From 0 to 5 seconds with respect to, and we move to this with respect to lowercase t. Lowercase t. And that's going to be how much energy has been lost by the capacitor between 0 and 5 seconds after switching over to the second circuit. How do I evaluate that? Numerical value. The capacitor has lost 37.626 joules. But at t equals 0, the voltage in the capacitor was 10 volts. So the energy in the capacitor was 1 half C, 10 volts squared. C is 2. So initially, the capacitor had 100 joules of energy. Well, that means uh, that the capacitor has only 62.374 joules left at T equal 5 seconds, which is exactly what we obtained before in a much simpler manner.